Hello and welcome to What's in the Night Sky for April 2024. My name's Hayley and this month's highlights include a possible naked eye comet, the constellation of Cancer, the beehive cluster and a partial solar eclipse for observers in some parts of the UK. Let's start by taking a look at the planets. None of the planets are particularly well placed for detailed observing this month. They all lie a bit too close to the sun. However, if you are around close to sunrise or sunset, you might be able to catch a glimpse of some of them. Mars and Saturn are morning planets, um, visible really close to the horizon just before sunrise. So if you want to catch a glimpse of them, you need to have a nice, clear eastern horizon. So somewhere that's got a nice um, flat horizon without any big trees or buildings in the way. And then you need to go out just before the sun rises. At the beginning of April, the sun will be rising at about half past six, and that will vary slightly depending on where you are in the UK. So I'm looking towards the east at around half past five at the moment. I'm just going to bring time onwards a bit. And you can see the moon rising. This is why I've chosen the sixth to show you, because Saturn and Mars are joined by the crescent moon on the morning of the sixth, and that will be a really nice little triangular pattern to see if you can pick out. So this will be difficult to spot. There isn't too much that you're going to gain from looking at these with a, a telescope when the sky is as bright as this. So my advice would be to um, come out with a pair of binoculars and see if you can spot these. Um, so that will be quite difficult to um, spot, but there'll be lots of satisfaction if you manage to see them. And as we go through the month, Mars and Saturn do get better placed for observing so it will be most difficult at the beginning of the month and as the month goes on they get a bit better you do need to compensate for the fact that the sun is rising earlier the later in the month that you choose to go out if you prefer observing in the evening then you can have a go at spotting jupiter which really is the best of the planets this month and even then it's still not brilliantly placed so um, it's still quite low to the horizon after sunset so here we are in the, in the west on the 1st of April and you can see um, Jupiter shining brightly and if we move time onwards so sunset will be just before eight o'clock um, around the beginning of the month and you can see that Jupiter is moving towards setting um, by about 10 o'clock. So you're going to have a couple of hours at best after sunset at the beginning of the month and the, the situation gets worse as the month goes on for Jupiter. So the best time to observe it is near the beginning of the month. By the end of the month it will be disappearing into that evening twilight and you're going to have a really difficult time observing it. If we move our date towards the 10th, and you can see how much lower Jupiter is getting as we go through the month, then um, Jupiter is joined by the crescent moon. Um, so this is a, a nice opportunity to see um, the bright planet Jupiter in a very slim crescent moon on the 10th. And you can also see that we've got the planet Uranus really close to Jupiter as well. Um, this will be hard to spot because the, the sky is not very dark and Uranus is very faint anyway. So um, you can certainly have a go at it with a pair of binoculars. And if we go even later into the month, you can see that the, the, the separation between Uranus and Jupiter is, is closing and they make their closest approach on the 20th, which is just on my screen when they're about to go behind a tree. Um, let's see if we can do it so we'll do it on the 19th and if we put a binocular um, field of view on then you can see that you should be able to comfortably get the two of them into the same field of view um, on a pair of binoculars so that might help you to pick out Uranus um, as you can see you do need to make sure you've got a clear horizon if you've got things like trees in the way then that's going to hinder you from being able to see them Another thing you can do to aid your ability to see Uranus is just go out as late as possible when the sky is as dark as possible. And again, that depends on how clear your horizon is. I'm just going to change mine. Something I have the privilege of being able to do when I'm just working at a computer, which is a little bit harder when you're doing things for real. Um, so if I now go later... 
you can see the sky getting much darker. Here we go. Let's go to the 20th now as well when they are making their closest approach. Put that binocular view on again and you're going to be able to see Uranus much more easily against a darker sky. If you try too early, you're not going to be able to pick it out. Um, but since they are so close together, you'll be able to pick out Jupiter fairly easily and then you can have a go at, at finding Uranus as well. While we're in this area of the sky, I'm going to talk about Comet Ponds Brooks, which is quite exciting because we might be treated to a naked eye comet this month. There are lots of comets around all the time, but we don't often get ones that we can see with our naked eye. Um, I'm just going to go back to the first and then we can track it through the month. So you can see how much better placed Jupiter and Uranus are at the beginning of the month compared to towards the end of the month. And over here we have Comet 12p Pons Brooks and if we zoom in on it you can see that it looks like sort of a smudgy blob a smudgy greenish blob and you can see the tail going outwards from the comet so we think that it's going to be a naked eye comet starting at about mag the fifth magnitude at the beginning of the month which is just inside naked eye visibility so it will still be really faint and the thing with comets is they are super unpredictable so um we don't know how bright the, the comet will get. If it has some outbursts, um, then it could get really, really bright. So we can keep our fingers crossed for that. The thing to do when you're trying to find it is to sweep around um, this area of the sky with a pair of binoculars. See if you can spot that smudgy green blob. If we take a look at how it moves as we go through the month, you can see that it is getting closer and closer to Jupiter. Um, and this comet last visited us in 1953. Um, it has a an orbital period of 71 years and it has regularly reached naked eye brightness um, at the times when it's visited to us, um, partly because it's so big. Um, it's about the, the nucleus of the comet is about twice the size of Halley's Comet. Um, so we can hope for naked eye brightness and we can hope that um, it might have some kind of outburst and um, become super bright. It's possible. We don't know. Um, it makes its closest approach to Jupiter on the 13th of April. Um, so here we are on the 13th and you might be able to get both of these into um, the, the, the same field of view of a pair of binoculars just like we did with um, Uranus earlier so this binocular view that I'm using um, on Stellarium is a 10 by 50 view which means it's a magnification of 10 times um, so this gives you a, a rough idea of how much of the sky you'll, you'll see if you have a pair of binoculars that magnifies 10 times. For this month's moon watch I'd like to talk about the solar eclipse that occurs on the 8th of April you may have seen something about it in the news. Observers in the US are going to be treated to a total eclipse and I'm sure there'll be lots of um, pictures for us to look at after that happens. Here in the UK, you might be able to catch a partial eclipse occurring at sunset if you are located in the West. So observers in Scotland, Wales and western parts of England will be able to see a partial eclipse starting at around 7.55pm. Um, just as the sun is setting and you'll get about five minutes of eclipse and then it will be gone. Um, so if you are in the right part of the UK and the skies are clear and you can find a clear horizon, then um, it could definitely be worth going and having a look, see whether you can spot it. Um, from Leicester, it's not going to be visible. So I'm going to change my location and I'm going to change it to Belfast. Um, so here we go to Belfast and we're going to go to the 8th of April, 7.50 um, and you can see here looking towards the west, you can see the moon approaching the sun very low to the horizon just as the sun's about to set. 
it is important that even though the sun is low and it doesn't appear as intense as it does when it's high in the sky, you can still damage your vision if you look at it with your naked eye. So you must not do that. Um, you need to use a safe solar filter, either a filter for your camera or your binoculars or your telescope or a pair of eclipse glasses um, so that you can observe safely. And if we just watch how the eclipse happens, so it looks like first contact is occurring at about 7.55, 7.56. And now you can see a bite taken out of the sun and it's gone. The sun has set. So just a few minutes of eclipsed sun on the 8th for those of you that are in the right part of the UK. If you're not sure whether you are in the path of the eclipse, then if you download um, this software that I'm using right now, which is called Stellarium, and then you can go to your location window, just as you saw me do, and you can change your location to your own location, and then you can see whether the eclipse is visible where you are. Let's take a look at our constellation of the month now, which is Cancer. So I'm going to go into the evening a little bit more. And I wanted to stay in this region around a, a Canis Major and Canis Minor because we've been looking at those over the last couple of months. You can see Sirius, the dog star over here. Um, so I've chosen Cancer for this month's constellation of the month, partly because um, this time of year, March, April, is the best time to observe it. Um, to find it, it's a very faint constellation, so to find it, you need to have a look and see if you can find the, the twins um, of Gemini, so Castor and Pollux, the twins of Gemini, and um, the bright star in Leo, the lion, Regulus. So you can find those and then look between them, and that will take you to Cancer. Um, it's the faintest of the 12 constellations of the Zodiac, and um, if you are not aware, a constellation of the zodiac is one that lies along the ecliptic or the path of the sun across the sky. And the sun appears to pass through each of these constellations of the zodiac over the course of a year. And that's where, um, if you're interested in astrology, that's where star signs come from. Um, it's ideal to have a dark location to find it because it's faint. Um, so if you can go somewhere uh, away from light pollution on a moonless night, um, see if you can find it. And you may be able to spot the faint smudge of the beehive cluster, which is over here. Um, and the beehive cluster, or M44, is one of the closest open clusters to Earth. Um, it's about the diameter of um, three full moons, so it's pretty big. Um, and you can try with a pair of binoculars, see if you can resolve that smudge into a swarm of stars. You won't be able to see any individual stars with your naked eye. If you're in a dark enough location and you have good vision, you might be able to spot it just as a smudge. Um, but you do want to use a pair of binoculars or a telescope at low magnification to see if you can spot those stars. There are around 1,000 stars altogether in the Beehive Cluster and some of them have confirmed exoplanets in orbit around them so there may well be Earth-like planets even um, in orbit around some of those stars in the Beehive Cluster. Uh, spring is the best time of year to observe Cancer. Uh, it will disappear into sunlight during the summer months um, so now is a good time to look for it. If we put the art on, you can see it depicted as a crab. Um, and in Greek mythology, Cancer is the crab sent by the goddess Hera to plague the hero Hercules during his battle with the serpent Hydra. And you can see the serpent down here um, as well. So the crab snapped at Hercules' ankles until it was crushed by um, his foot and Hera, who then felt sorry for the crab, threw it up into the sky in honour of its effort against Hercules. Uh, the ancient Egyptians associated cancer with the scarab beetle um, and it was thought to symbolise rebirth and renewal. I do want to mention before we go the Lyrids meteor shower. So if we swing around to the north and find Lyra with the very bright star Vega. And um, there is a meteor shower that originates um, in Lyra called the Lyrids. And um, that will peak on the 22nd and the 23rd of 
April. It's not a good time for um, the Lyrids this year because there is a full moon in the sky. If we zoom out, you can see it over here. Um, so that will wash out the, the fainter meteors. If you are observing um, on these days or you happen to be out and about and the sky is clear, then it is still worth having a look to see if you can spot any Lyrid meteors. Um, if we put meteor showers on, then... Um, you can see the radiant of the meteor shower is up here. So the radiant being the point in the sky where the meteors appear to originate from. But you can look anywhere in the sky um, to spot the meteors. You don't have to look towards the radiant. It's good to wait until um, Lyra has risen nice and high. So if you can wait until around midnight or the early hours of the morning, then that's good. Um, and as always with meteor showers, you want the darkest location possible. Um, and then it's a case of getting comfortable, lying on a sun lounger if you can, um, wrapped up nice and warm, letting your, dark, your eyes dark adapt for about 20 minutes and then seeing how many meteors you can spot. I'd like to finish, as I usually do, by talking about the International Space Station. All of the uh, ISS passes for this month are early morning ones, so um, you need to be a bit of a morning person if you want to catch the ISS this month. The one that looks the best to me occurs on the 30th of April at around five past four. Um, so if we go to five past four and look towards the west, and here we go. We see the ISS and we can watch it zoom out a little bit as it makes its way across the sky over about five or six minutes until it sets again in the east. Um, so nice early morning ISS pass for you if you happen to be an early riser. That brings me to the end of our night sky tour for April and I wish you clear skies for all of your observing this month.